Hi, this is Holly of Holly's Soap Making. I thought I would share a couple of soaps that I made for myself and really like to use during the colder winter months. So in this video, I'll show my unscented oatmeal soap with lots of shea and cocoa butter. And my next video will be about my lavender soap that's made with goat milk, oats, and honey. As always, if you're interested in the recipe, you'll find it at the end of this video listed in a soap calculator. Be sure to check the description box below for links and information mentioned in the video, and especially if you're new to soap making, you'll find links on lie safety and beginner soap making. Remember to protect your eyes and skin when making soap, and practice lie safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process, even while cleaning up. Whenever I add oats to soap, I like to use a very fine colloidal oatmeal. I'll either grind up some oats myself into a fine powder and then sift out the coarse pieces so the soap isn't scratchy at all. Or I'll just buy a really fine colloidal oatmeal and use that. I normally like to use one tablespoon of the colloidal oatmeal for 500 grams of oil in my recipe. However, for this soap, I used two tablespoons for every 500 grams of oil, which amounted to 25 grams of colloidal oatmeal, or 2.5% of the total oils in the recipe. When you're creating the lye, be sure to work in a well-ventilated area and don't stand directly over the lye or breathe any of the fumes. Once the sodium hydroxide has completely dissolved, I just sit the lye aside to cool down. When I'm weighing out the oils, I always like to start with the cocoa butter first since it has the highest melting temperature. Once it's mostly melted, I add the shea butter and coconut oil. And then while they're melting, I measure out the olive and castor oils. Then I combine them all together. added the dry colloidal oatmeal powder directly to the oils and then blended until it was completely incorporated and smooth.
This recipe took a bit longer than usual to reach Trace. After about five and a half minutes of blending and stirring, it finally reached a light medium Trace. I did oven process the soap to make sure it went through gel phase. However, I decided to check on it about three hours later and discovered it had already gelled completely. So I removed it from the oven and let it sit covered on the counter until the next morning when I unmolded and cut it. The soap was already quite hard, so I was glad I didn't let it sit much longer before cutting it. It did have a very strong shea butter scent at first, but as with my previous shea butter soaps, that has faded almost completely with time. Since this was a cold process soap, I made sure the type of lye was set to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 1000 grams. My lye concentration was set to 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% water. I set the super fat to 6%, and since this was an unscented soap, I just left the fragrance alone, or you can set it to zero if you like. Once you have all of your information entered, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. Soap Calc will give you a really nice listing of your ingredients, along with the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.